Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so the next program in chapter 4 is square display. Okay, so write a program that asks the user for a positive integer no greater than 15. The program should then display a square on the screen using the character X, like a capital X. The number entered by the user will be the length of each side of the square. For example, if the user enters 5, the program should display the following like this. So because so because the user entered 5, there's go there going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 horizontally and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertically. All right. So if the user enters 8, the program should display the following. So if the, because the user entered 8, there are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you're going to be... So 8... Um, columns and then one two three four five six seven eight rows all right that's that's how it's going to display all right <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do basically all right so let's start so basically the, the user is going to enter a number and then that number is going to be basically the length in terms of columns and length, length in terms of rows of the output okay and the program is going to use capital x to display it all right <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and create the class. Then I'll call it square display. <coughs> and then I'll create the main method. OK. All right, so. Since we're going to be asking for user input, since we're going to be asking the user to enter in, enter input, we have to use one of Java's features for accepting user input. So we can either use the JOption pane or the scanner. Okay, we can use one of those. So I'm I mean th th those are two of the options we can use. I'm sure there are other options. I'm sure, but um, those are two of the options we can use. So in this case, I'm going to be using the scanner. I'm going to use a scanner to, just because the previous program I used a Jeroption pane. So I'm trying to just mix it up. So in order to use a scanner, we need to import it. We need to import it so that, so that this program can have access to the scanner class. So to import it, I'm going to type import java.util.scanner like this. So now, we, so now this program has access to the scanner class. Now in order to use a scanner, we need to go ahead and create a scanner object. Or declare a scanner object. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. I'm going to create a scanner object. I'm going to call it scanner. It's going to be a new. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new scanner object in memory. I'm passing in oops, the system.in method, which is basically going to accept byte info from the keyboard and then connect it to the scanner object. So I can use the methods in the scanner class to convert the inputs that the user has typed to. Um, integers or strings or whatever I need it to be in. So now I have the scanner object so I can go ahead and use it, right? I can go ahead and use it. So write a program that asks the user for a positive integer no greater than 15, right? So first let's get the number before we, we check to make sure it's, it's not greater than 15, all right? Um, so let's do that. Uh, before we, uh, we, we make sure it's not greater than 15 and it's also a positive number, right? So let's, let's do just that. Let's um, ask the user to enter a positive number no greater than 15. We have to check. We'll check on it, that, that number, though. All right, so system.out.print ln. And we're going to ask, ask the user, please enter a positive number not greater than 15. And then once this question is asked. We want to accept input, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use the scanner, the scanner object that I created over here, and I'm going to call it the next int, no, the next next int method, All right? So the, so the next int, int method is going to accept input from the user. It's going to accept an integer from the user, right? And when it does that, we need a place to store it. Okay, this kind of the next int is going to pop up a text box and allow the user to type in something. What the, user, what the user types is going to be returned as an integer, okay? It's going to be, what the user types is going to be converted to an integer and then returned. So once it's returned, we need a place to store it, okay? So over here, I'm going to call 
I'm go up here and declare an integer variable. I'm going to call it. Let's see. That number is just a number. So I'm going to call it. It's going to be an integer. I'm going to call it user integer. User integer, right? And then I'll terminate it. So once the user types in something and it's returned, I'm going to go ahead and install that number in user integer like this. So after this statement runs, user integer is going to store what the, the number that the user typed. Now let's check on this number to make sure the user typed the correct inf um, number because if the user didn't type the correct number, we want to make sure that the user does. So we want to send the user a message and tell the user, hey, type in a, a, a number, um, a positive number, not, gr not greater than 15, right? So that means 0 to 15, right? Um, yeah, 0 to 15. All right. Um, no, actually, let's say from 1 to 15, because if they, they enter 0, then nothing's going to happen. So let's say 1 to 15, right? So that's a positive number, not, not greater than 15. All right. So let's check on this number and say, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, because now we have the number here, so I'm going to create the while loop over here and say this. I'm going to say, while the user integer, Okay. First, let's 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 check to make sure that it's not um, less than one. Okay. Okay. While the user integer is less than one. Okay. If that means if it's anything zero and below, anything zero and negative. While the user integer is not less than is is less than one. Okay. Or okay. Now I'm going to use two pipes as or like okay. Two of these keys. The two pipes as or. Or user integer is greater than 15. Okay, so while the user integer is either less than 1 or the user integer is, is greater than 15, so if any of these is true, then it's going to do what in this while loop. Even if it's even if one of them is true, it's going to do what in the while loop. If both of them are true, it's still going to do what in the while loop. All it needs is for one of them to be true. That's why it says or. That's why these two pipes mean or. So if the user integer is less than one, okay, meaning if it's zero or negative, or the user integer is greater than fifteen, yeah, meaning if it's greater than fifteen, all right, so sixteen, seventeen. Then let's keep asking the user, okay, let's keep asking the user a question and saying, well, this time around we're going to even add a, add, add a message to it and saying, we're going to say, please enter. Or let's say, please re-enter a positive number not greater than fifteen. Okay, so we can let, let's give the user the user even um, an extra int over here and say one to fifteen, please. You know, just to stress it, one to fifteen, please. All right, just to you know make the user aware. And once we ask this question, let's go ahead and take the, that input again and store it in user input. Take that take that input, convert it to an uh, to an integer, and then store it in user user integer. All right. Everything that's restore uh, returned from this is going to be a string, but it's going to be converted to an integer. Everything that's re uh, returned from that text box, what the user types, is going to be a string basically, but it's going to be converted to an integer and stored in user integer. Same thing here. It's going to be converted to an integer and stored in and stored in user integer. So now the user is going to be the user, the user is going to type it again. Okay, type the user into um, the value again. It's going to be stored in user integer, and then this while loop is going to come back up and check again. Over here, I typed integer, so integer. Okay, integer. All right, so I fixed it. Okay, so while the user integer is not or, or is less than one, or user integer is greater than fifteen, then keep on asking the user. Tell the user again, hey, type in the correct thing, and then accept it again and keep test testing. So as long as the, the value is not valid, this loop is going to keep going. The user is going to keep on getting that question. But if it's correct, and it comes back up here and check, that number will not be less than 1. That number will not be greater than 15. It will fall within. So it's going to it's not going to run everything in this in this while loop. It's not going to run anything in this while loop because this statement is not going to be true. So it's going to break out of the while loop and continue down from here. It's going to continue down from here. Uh, it's going to run whatever code follows this while loop. Okay, so now we've verified to make sure the number is clean. It's it's, it's valid, right? So let's go ahead and create a for loop. I'm going to create a for loop over here, and 
I'll explain. So first of all, I want to create, okay, first of all, let's focus on creating, um, you know what, let, let's create everything, all right? So let's create everything. So what, what is happening is um, there are rows and columns, right? So there are rows, how many rows? One, two, three, four, five rows, right? So we know that we can do that. We know we can, we can create five rows. We know we can create, and there are five columns. We can create five columns. So first, so first, let's start with rows. All right, let's 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 start with rows. One, two, three, four, five. I want to start with rows. I'm going to use a for, a for loop, okay? Because this is going to happen five times. I want to create five rows like this, all right? And, and it will make sense as I go. But I'm going to um, declare a variable. I'm going to call it. It's, good, it's going to be an integer, okay? Because it's going to represent a row, okay? Row one, row two, row three. I'm going to call it int row, okay? I'm going to initialize it to one, okay? And I'm going to say as long as the row, okay, is less than or equal to the user integer. Okay, because that's the number we are working on. As long as it's less than or equal to in user integer. So if it's five, if the user integer is five, it's going to start from one to five. It's going to start from one, two, three, four, five. Meaning it's going to run or iterate five times. So if the row is less than or equal to user integer, let's do what's in the while loop. Oh, sorry, in the for loop. And before you come back up and check to see if the row is less than or equal to user integer, add one to row. So basically, I don't want to row, which is row plus plus. Basically, that means that start from one and then end at five. So as long if if you start from one and you keep on incrementing row by one and you haven't reached the user integer, which is we are assuming it's five. Okay, we are assuming the user type in five. Then keep adding one to row integer yeah, until you get to five. So and when you get to five, stop. So basically, it's Basically, this um, loop is going to run five times. So we know there are five rows, right? So we have five times, five rows, okay? So let's start with that. Now, now anytime we get to a row, right? So let's say we we are going to, we want to print this. So, so now we're in the first row right now. Now, when we're in the first row, we want to print one, two, three, four, five Xs before we move on to the second row, okay? So now we're in the first row. We want to go ahead and print one, two, three, four, five, five Xs. And we can do that with a loop also. So in that for loop, okay, now we're in the first row because we're in row one. This loop, this this loop is going to do what's what whatever is in this block before before the row gets to two. Before we, we increase the row the root to two. So now we're in row one. In row one, before we move to row two, we want to print five axes. We can do that with a loop too. So I'm going to go ahead and print a for loop in this for loop. And I'm going to and that for loop is going to represent our columns, right? So it's going to represent our columns like this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a variable. I'm going to call it column, and I'm going to initialize it to one. And I'm going to basically do the same thing. As long as column is less than or equal to user integer. Okay. Do what's in the, in the, well, in this case, we want to print X. Okay. Do it five times, print X. Print X basically print X five times before you, before you increase row to two, and then do it again. So basically, as long as column is less than or equal to user integer, do what's in the for this for loop the 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 inner one, and then before you come back up and check to see if column is less than or equal to user integer, add one to column. So column plus plus. <coughs> All right, so that means it's basically this inner loop is going to start from one, column is going to start from one, and it's going to end at the user integer. Assuming the, assuming the user typed in five, it's going to end at five. But each time before it comes back up and, and check this condition where the column is less than or equal to user integer, it's going to add one to column. So the column starts from one, that's what's in a while loop. One is being incremented, so column, column becomes two. That's what's in a while loop. And it's going to do it five times, assuming the user types five. If it's the user types eight, it's going to do it eight times. So in this in this while loop, before it goes up and increases uh, row to to two, okay, we're in the first row. Before it goes up and increases row to two and, and gets to the second row, before it goes up to two, let's let's print x five times, right? And we're using a loop to do it. So we can in this in this for loop, we can go ahead and 
print x five times, right? So we can just say system.out.print. And I'm using print, I'm not using print Ellen. I want to print an x. So basically, this loop is going to run five times, right? So each time it runs, just print the letter x. Okay. So it's, it's going to run five times. And I'm using print, meaning when x is printed, there's not there's not going to be a new line. So that means that means there's not going to whatever comes after this x is not going to be printed on the next line. It's just going to continue on its right. It's just going to continue because it's print. Print doesn't print whatever that comes next after this x on a new line. Okay. It it doesn't create print doesn't create a new line after after printing this x. Okay. So the Keza stays right after this x, waiting for the next thing to be, to be printed. Okay. So that's what print does. Print doesn't move the Keza to the next line. It just keeps the Keza right after this has been printed, like this. So the next thing that's the next time this loop comes around and prints, the next x is going to follow like this. All right. But now we we just want to print x. Okay. Not not five x's. If we if we do five x's like this, it's bad because now each time this loop runs, it's going to print five x's, and we don't want that. You want to print just one x because it's going to uh, roll uh, roll around or uh, iterate five times. It's going to print this five times, and because we are using print, print is not going to take the keyset to the next line. It's going to keep the keyset on the same in this, uh, this, uh, right after this x is printed. It's going to keep the keyset here like this. Right after this x is printed, it's going to keep the keyset there. So the next thing that follows this x is going to be to follow right after this x where the keyset is. So that's going to basically print this five x's one two three four five and then we're going to increase row by two i mean sorry row, row by one so row is going to go to two so basically row is going to go to two right and then this is going to be printed again right but the thing is we have to write something in this for in this in this loop so that the keza moves to the to, to the next line right so after this loop okay in the fall in the outer loop which represents our row when when that when this five when this x is printed five times so basically when this is done like this when this x is printed five times we want to take the keza to the next line right and guess what this outer loop is what's representing the rows right this outer loop is what's re representing our rows so after after this is printed five times remember this is going to be incremented by one and this is going to print again five times this is going to increment by another one and, you know move around five times so anytime Anytime this is done, anytime one of this outer loop is done, before you go back up and increase row to two, let's go ahead and call the system.out.println method with nothing in there to create a new line. Now, anytime you call the system.out.println line, remember when you type in something, it, it prints that thing, right? And then it ends it with a new line character, meaning it takes the keyset to the next line. So anything that follows this string here appears right on the next line appears on the next line okay print doesn't move the keyset to the next line but print ln or print line after i printed this it takes the keyset to the next line so anything that follows this string is printed on the next line right so that's what we want to do we want we, we don't want to print anything in there right we, we just want to we just want to print nothing meaning it's going to print nothing right it's going to print no text but it's going to move the keyset to the next line so what is what is happening is this we are starting with an outer loop right and then we are creating an inner loop and an outer loop. So we are in row one. We are going to print x five times. It's basically going to print one, two, three, four, five. And after that, after that is done, right? Before it goes back up and increases row, row to two, it's going to just going to create a new line. Take the keza to the next line here. And then now row is two. So it is going to run another five times. It's going to print this x five times like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then well, after it's done printing that, it, it creates a new line, meaning it takes a keza to the next line, like this. And then x is printed again five times, one, two, three, four, five. And then it takes, it prints a new line, so x moves to the next line. It does that until basically all of them. So this is printing five times, and this loop, outer loop, is also moving five times. Okay, the, and that five represents the number that a user has typed. So I, make it, I, I hope it makes sense. So basically this code over here, is going to print our output. It's going to just just by just by writing this code here with one x in here over here. It's going to basically give us this output, right? All right. So let, let's see if it works. I'm going to go ahead and compile this, and I'm going to create 
a folder and I'm going to call it square display and I'll create square display in here all right I forgot to terminate this so I'm just going to terminate that um, compile let's see okay I didn't de uh, declare column okay, it's not declared up here anywhere over here I declared row but I didn't declare it I mean I didn't yeah add the type I did the type by really de uh, properly declaring it so I want it to be an integer so I'm going to type int say I'm, I was missing that so I'm going to compile this we have more errors okay so system dot print okay so it's not good it's not system dot print it's system dot out dot print okay so compile this and we're done so let's run this and see what happens all right so I'm going to raise this up so please enter a positive number not greater than 15 so let's test our input validation and see if if the user enters something bad the program is still going to accept it so I'm going to enter a negative 3 and hit enter and it's, 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 it says please re-enter a positive number not greater than 15 1 to 15 please I'm going to enter 20 okay 20 and hit enter it says please re-enter a positive number not greater than 15 1 to 15 please all right because okay, so I'm going to enter 5 and hit enter and see we have the same output as this right we have one two three four five axis and then we have oops one two three four five rows okay one two three four five rows so let's try let's run this again I'm going to enter um, eight so it's going to look like this so eight and then hit enter so we have one two three four five six seven eight columns and then one oops <laughs> and then one two three four five six seven eight rows okay so eight columns and eight rows okay I, I, I hope I didn't say yeah, eight rows when I was when I was doing this okay so these, these are columns <laughs> it's just using this one two three four five six seven eight okay and then one two two three four five six seven eight so it's working let's just try a couple more and I wouldn't count those too much so let's just start, try three so I'm expecting three columns three rows so I have three axes mm, and columns and then three rows just a couple more for fun I like testing these programs I'm going to enter um, for 41 way because the program said okay one to 15 so let's try 15 as the biggest and hit enter and see we have we have 15 rows one let's just see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so 15 works and this also should work um, as I said I wasn't going to test it but you know look here I, here I am testing it so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so that also works okay so yeah, we are done. All right. If you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. Bye-bye.